Very northeast flavour. I've got a story for romantics everywhere. Now this is Ash, or Ashley as your mother prefers you to be called, and he's a soldier and will be flying off to Afghanistan in October. But first, he wanted to send a special message to his girlfriend. So we thought a letter was too predictable, and it definitely shouldn't have been a text or an email. Then Ash had this bright idea. Skywriting. The art of flying a plane through complex aerobatic manoeuvres while drawing gigantic words in the sky. It was invented in Britain, but it's rarely been performed here since the 1930s. Well, today, we're going to attempt to bring it back. Skywriting took off in the 1920s. It was used to write advertising slogans that were visible for miles and it left its mark on the skies over Europe and America. But the idea that man could write in the sky was conceived in Britain just before the First World War, when former RAF Major Jack Savage found himself captivated by one of the flaws of early aircraft. In those early days, quite often the engines would misfire and you'd see a little puff of black smoke and a little short trail, and Savage thought, how great it would be if you could actually preserve that and show the whole path of the aeroplane. And he did that really by injecting oil into the exhaust pipe of the engine, so it sort of vaporised and made billows of white smoke. And it went on from there. Skywriting was an art, but in Savage's hands it became big business. He turned the sky into a giant billboard, and his new form of advertising was impossible to miss. It was in the spring of 1922, and the first day his pilot went up over Epsom Racecourse and did some sky writing. And then the very next day, June the 1st, he wrote Daily Mail in the sky over London in letters like six miles long. And people were absolutely stunned. Everybody came out of the shops. People were falling off their push bikes. <laughs> Just created an absolute sensation. It was amazing. Dodge Bailey is chief pilot at the Shuttleworth Collection home to a piece of skywriting history, one of Jack Savage's first skywriting aircraft. Well, this is an SE-5A. Right. It's probably the best British fighter of the First World War. And these planes were used for skywriting after the war? They were. They had good performance, and so they were an ideal choice, but they had to be modified for skywriting. So the exhaust pipe was extended all the way back to the tail to eject the smoke straight out of the tail of the aeroplane. And can we take her up? Well, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it to the professionals. <laughs> Savage's fleet once numbered more than 30 planes like these, but today this is the last original SE-5A still flying. This aircraft can no longer be used for skywriting, but in its day, it would have had to perform incredibly challenging manoeuvres, especially because in order to write words that can be read from below, the skywriting pilots had to write the words backwards, and that's not as easy as it looks. One of the old skywriting pilots of the 20s, he said, you have to concentrate really hard when you're doing it all the time, because if you get lost, you can't just wipe the sky clean. <laughs> the novelty value of skywriting wore off in the 1930s, and it was eventually banned as a form of advertising. But if you think that means we can't give it a go, you're wrong. Now those are twisters, and they're gonna help us write two very important words in the sky. We're going to try and write Marry Me, so a young soldier can propose to his girlfriend before he heads off on a tour of duty in Afghanistan. Ash Griffiths wants to pop the question to Sophie Edwards in the most spectacular way possible. And the one show is going to try to make his dream come true. Sophie has no idea what's going to happen, but it's going to be tough. Writing full words in the sky will be a huge challenge with our British weather. Join us later in the programme to find out how it goes. What? 
We are taking on a huge challenge. We're going to try and write the words marry me in the sky for a very special proposal. The pilots who are going to attempt it for us are two aerobatic aces, Guy Westgate and Peter Wells. And they'll need every ounce of their experience for this challenge. Skywriting isn't performed in Britain anymore, and this will be the first time they've tried it. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we can write Marry Me. It's just a question of whether, whether you can read it from the ground. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges is really the weather, and we need some moisture in the air for the smoke to linger, we need calm winds and we need some luck. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the young man Guy and Peter will be skywriting for. Ash Griffiths is a 22-year-old soldier and he's ready to pop the question to his girlfriend Sophie. She's lovely. She's really supportive of me being in the army. Um, pits up with me going away a lot. Going to Afghanistan in the start of October. So I thought, now would be the time to ask her to marry me. And are you nervous? About Afghanistan? Not <laughs> at all. Not <laughs> about at all. getting married? <laughs> about getting married? A little bit, yeah. And do you think she'll say yes? Yeah, of course she will. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. We can't risk Ash's proposal going wrong, so Guy and Peter are going to have a trial run. Okay, so I expect you to turn nine degrees left for a fast start heading, correct? But there's a problem. A bank of cloud has moved in. OK, guys, see that from the ground. How's that look? Now, I can see they're making their letters, but it's just not showing up. Such a shame. And starting the A. Keep trying, guys. It's no use. The cloud is the same colour as the smoke, so it's impossible to see anything from the ground. Turn underneath you. Just start the second R now. But from the air looking down, we can see that Guy and Peter are actually skywriting. Just look at those letters. As they feared, though, there isn't enough moisture in the air to hold the smoke, and the letters quickly disappear. I have to say, conditions are pretty tricky. We've got a lot of cloud, which means there's not much contrast. The air's very dry, which means the smoke doesn't linger. That was pretty tough. Guy and Peter have proved that they can skywrite, but they've also shown that it's far too risky to try when Ash's proposal is so important. But we've got a plan B. Guy and Peter can fly far below the clouds and try and draw a huge heart in the sky. Sophie can't possibly miss that. A marriage proposal needs a romantic setting, so Ash and Sophie have spent the night at Leeds Castle in Kent. Sophie thinks she's here for a weekend getaway. She has absolutely no idea what's really in store for her. We've rigged hidden cameras and arranged a special private tour of the castle to keep Sophie occupied, while we wait outside to see what the weather does. There's still a lot of cloud about, and it's really low as well, so it could be a problem. There's more bad weather moving in, so it's now or never. Guy and Peter have to go for the heart now. And just to make absolutely sure Sophie gets the message, we've got an extra surprise up our sleeves, a giant banner. We've given Ash a secret signal. It's time to bring Sophie outside. Please do it. First, a spectacular barrel roll to get Sophie's attention. Then it's time for the main event, our enormous heart. They are going to make a heart, look at that. She's seen the heart, but she still hasn't realised it's for her. She'd better say yes after that. This is it. Our banner finally reveals the big secret to Sophie. Oh, my God. <laughs> will you marry me? Yeah. Yeah, of course you will. <laughs> I've been lying to you for about two months now, so yeah. Didn't sleep all last night. Struggling. No. It's like wide awake, just lying there. Just she said yes. Job done. Thank God for that. Right, we're going home. Oh, what a moment! Oh, who can oh. say no to a heart in the sky? Brilliant, Ashley. Yeah.
Cheers, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Really Did good. you have any idea, Sophie? No, no idea. But I definitely won't forget that now. So I know. And you've got some tears in your eyes, yeah. As a little girl, <laughs> when you think about the man that proposed to you, you and you suddenly have that yeah, all you different... You can't beat that, can you? Unbelievable. There was so, no is. choice after that, was there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how, how long ago was that? And Are there any plans it, now? It for the was way? exactly a month today. OK. So, yeah. And how, how yeah. are plans going? Or are you just putting um, them on hold No plans yet, but...